Let me get this verse out It turns out, I ain't ever turned down I ain't ever took a break, never burned out Never look away when my fate didn't work out Never hesitated, never fake when your word count Never worry about what they say with the slurred mouth I never place at the pace I prefer now This is Welcome that. everyone to the Trig Zach Show I'm joined here with Eric, Brian, XSIQ And our special guest today is uh, UB Half Assess Crew You might know him as Ubiquitous though How you doing man? Hope you're staying safe during this time bro Thanks for coming on me, man. Yeah, uh, all safe. No, no Corona. You know, no complaints in that arena. <laughs> nice. <so far. laughs> That's good. That's good to hear. Anyway, yeah. so um, I'm 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 kind of ashamed here that I I I just got into your catalog recently, bro. So I, I kind of feel bad because when I heard your Read 'Em and Weep song and got into the um the newest album, I was like, this dude is amazing. I would love to have him on. So I really appreciate you getting on, bro. Absolutely. Um, I'm not mad at you, man. As long as you found me, I'm not mad about when you found me. Um, right. It probably makes it a, an adventure to work backwards. There's, Absolutely. There's all there, you know? Go mm -hmm. down the, I've been going down the wormhole for like two months, man. So, <laughs> sure. so what we like to do here is um, when we have people on, just you know, talk about your past, how you got into rap, man, how you started. And uh, just your uh, before we get into the strange music, the Tech 9 stuff, um, just – Where'd you start out? How'd you know you wanted to do what you, you're doing now? Um, you know, I, man, it's been a long journey. <laughs> 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 I started out in, uh, in, in, um, in, the, in the Denver area. I grew up in Arvada, Colorado, um, and, uh, which is uh, just north of Denver, like a suburb of Denver. Um, and that's kind of where I started rhyming during the golden era. Um, in the late nineties, that's, I guess that's what spawned me like rap as I'm sure in hip hop at the time was like kind of ridiculous. It was unbelievable how many classic records were coming out literally oh, yeah. every year that yeah. are still celebrated in the culture. Um, and I think that maybe that was probably what compelled me, you know, it was, um, just, it was, it was a hell of a decade for the culture, you know? Right. Was there a certain song you heard that you're just like, okay, this is what I want to do? Uh, no, nah, I mean, I can't even pin it on, on one song. Um, you know, there, there, there's a couple like key demarcation points in my development that, that I could cite. Um, I think, you know, forever I'll be a massive Wu-Tang fan. <laughs> Probably Wu-Tang pushed me over the edge. Um, because they had such a, um, like a ground and pound movement, you know, just as a collective and then separately and then solo projects one after another, and then another collective project that was crazier than the first one, maybe. And then, mm. and then more solo projects. And it was just like really compelling. Um, so I, I mean, I'm always going to be highly influenced by those guys. Um, I probably have to credit them. Nice, <laughs> for, nice. for for me wanting to rhyme not not just them because i could go on and on and on yeah. I'm, I'm uh i'm very influenced by that era the late 90s you say obviously you know you had ml um were you constantly compared to him as you were growing up ciphering uh i never stopped i right. still get compared to him yeah um okay. i'll probably always be compared to him mm -hmm. um and I think initially that was something that irritated the shit out of me mm -hmm. as I was trying to like, uh, yeah. like, um, you know, prove my autonomy right. and my individuality. But anymore, um, especially considering what a legend he is for the culture and the game and how really good he is at it. Yeah. I would take it, dude. Compare yeah. me to <laughs> him. That is, that is a huge compliment. Um, and, uh, I'm happy to get that kind of a comparison. You could compare me to a pile of trash, you know what I mean? I'll take an Eminem comparison all day. Right. How did you, how did you develop your style? Because like stylistically, like your flow, your cadence, it's just fucking sharp. Like just, Polished. Every, it just hits. Like there's not a spot, like, you know how you listen to some rappers and they'll have like a little spot where it kind of gets a little choppy. And I mean, they st it's their thing. But, like, you don't have a spot that ever comes along in any song that I've heard you've done that where it's like, oh, he may, maybe he missed this a little bit. Like, you're just on point every bar, every yeah. Um, 
I don't know. I guess that's the benefit of, of, of writing something down and getting the, the chance to, um, you know, like a, a, an opportunity to edit, you know, I can write it, look at it, say it back and be like, ah, uh, maybe I could tighten that up right there. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that I always do that with my writing, but, um, they say, uh, you know, some it's like an old thing from Finding Foresters. I don't know if you ever saw that movie. Yes, we have. That is the – I've been trying to get Brian to watch that movie for 20 uh, years. That is one of the best movies of all time. It's a great movie. I mean, yes. from a, for if you're a writer, I mean, it's there's like jewels all through the movie. Yep. But he says something about um, the first draft you write with your heart and the second draft you write with your head. Mm. Um, so I, I still – kind of uh, try to follow that when I'm writing. Um, and, and as far as like heart writing, that's really, that's freestyling. I'm, I, I grew up freestyling. I can still freestyle, although it doesn't seem that anybody cares. It seems to be a lost art anymore. Yeah. So um, I don't, uh, it, it, you, but it used to be everything. You know, if you couldn't yeah. freestyle back in the day, it was like, you're out, you're out. Yeah. Yeah, we used, you're, used you're to go, yeah, you used to go to parties, and uh, we talked about this before. And if people knew you could rap, you had to prove it. Like you, you had to 100%. be able, to, yeah, you had to be able to rock the mic. And now it's kind of like no one even knows what a cipher is. No one knows what. All right, spit your best sixteen. So you, as like such a like uh, successful polished artist, does that bother you at all? I know, I know, like you don't worry about it that much, but does that irk you at all? Like, does it get to you certain times? Well. I would say I would I guess I would be bothered had I not benefited from the skill so much. The, the the bothersome part is is that I invested so much time and energy into the skill and now it's no longer a prerequisite. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There's that part. However, all of the time and energy that I did invest in the freestyling only really benefited my craft in the long run. Yeah. So um, you know, I so if it was the freestyling was like lifting mental weights, I got big. Um mm -hmm. And I, and I got to keep that bulk. Um, so that part's cool. The, the, the way that it's no longer a, a method of gatekeeping as mm. far as how to uh, keep shit tight within the yeah. culture, I do think that's unfortunate. I think we would have a whole different game yeah. if it still mattered. But it really doesn't seem to matter anymore. No, that's a great way to put it, the gatekeeping factor. Right. That's actually been thrown around a lot lately with the whole – um, Takashi situation like with the hip hop's lost its gatekeepers now because the internet like there's no gatekeepers anymore anyone could just come out and make it man that's a great thing and that's a terrible thing mm -hmm. yeah all at the same time we don't yeah. want the culture to be overly controlled by gatekeepers and curators because that's fucked up that's how you keep uh good people down yeah. now, because there is no floodgate like you said anybody can get through maybe you know mm. and so with that with that said you're going to get some a little bit of bullshit is going to come in right and sadly yeah, yeah. go on bro sorry no, 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 no. i was i wasn't saying i was saying it's true yeah and sadly um you know the little bit of bullshit seems to get the most views and whatnot but that's a whole nother story man um can I can I speak on that? Yeah, I, I, go I, on, man. Yeah. Perfect. This is your show, bro. Go. Yeah. <laughs> I want you to talk. Um, hold on. I think I might have lost you. One second. Are you still there? Um, We're good. Yeah. Right here. With the yeah. uh, um, with that said, you said a lot of the. You said basically the bullshit seems to be taking the forefront in your opinion. Mm -hmm. So, I hear that a lot. I hear mm -hmm. that a lot. But and and so I just have to take this opportunity to disagree. And y'all can tell okay. me. If you, no, that's fine. We yeah. can agree to disagree on this, but. Here's what, here's what I really think, that um, the true elite in the game to this day still are going to be your Jay-Zs, your J. Jay Coles, your Kendrick Lamars, uh, Drakes, Nas's, um, so, so on and so forth. These guys are still considered to be the best at what they do. Eminem, of course, um, Royce the Five Nines, Lupe right. Fiascos, so on and so forth. These guys get their flowers they're still regarded as some of the, the best that ever did it. it. I know maybe, I don't know if this is a Kanye fan room, but Kanye is a remarkable yeah. genius in yeah. the game and so yeah. on and so forth. And so you see these guys that have really a large respect for the craft and they are the Mount Rushmore of the game. Correct. And yeah. while it might feel like Takashi or I don't know who you want to hone in on as the bullshit, 
Um, although I think that my, also, I think there's a place for everybody in my opinion, okay. yeah. but, um, but it might feel like Takashi's like running the game, but I don't really think that's true. No. Yeah. The guys that run the game have decade plus legacy careers, Lil Wayne yeah. and sh- sh- shit like this. They don't go away. They don't, yeah. they, they get up, they stay up and then they dominate and then they birth the next round who sometimes, especially in Lil Wayne's case, happen to be the next vanguard round of MCs, your Nicki yeah. Minaj's yeah. and, and Drake. Drake's and shit like yeah. this. And so yeah. um, I, I, I've felt, I've, I guess I, you, the way, what you said before, I felt like that before. Mm. Um, but if you really assess it pound for pound, the illest dudes are still running this shit, I think. I think you, I think you can tell like, I agree with what you're saying, but I think that you can really tell that those dudes are still the ones running it because when any one of those people that you name drop an album, shit stops. For sure. There's nobody else that puts anything out. There's nobody else that does anything. It's their moment. Like, if Eminem Surprise drops an album tomorrow, the music world stops, and everyone acknowledges this album. Same thing with Lil Wayne. If Jay-Z puts something out, I think where Scott sees it is more like on the radios in pop culture that these sure. people yeah okay, you're gonna scroll down your facebook feed and you're gonna see takashi 69 Nicki minaj bullshit you're gonna see all those things and all the dumb videos and this and that you're not really seeing too much of uh news about j cole well that's actually a bad example we're right horrible now. example no <laughs> <name>. <laughs> okay. but you're not seeing their names regularly like that like how you think that you should being as they're the ones that are at the top of the food chain, essentially. But like I said, I do agree with that because when they put something out, like shit shuts down. Yeah. I, I, um, I, I see what you mean. And I think that there's, there's just like n- different lanes now that have opened up. Yeah. Like, in, like, like in Eminem's case, he doesn't even need a lane, dude. No. The lane, the lane opens when he moves, you know? He doesn't have to work a lane per se. Um, so you sort of go over a hump as a legend and then it, it kind of doesn't matter if radio's supporting you, if they're pumping your song on all the urban stations or the R&B stations all the time. That's, that actually doesn't matter. And uh, you, yeah, like, like J. Cole might drop a, a classic album that goes platinum um, and doesn't have one radio single on it. You know, um, yeah. and I guess that is just a testament that you don't necessarily need the radio yeah. um, to still be legendary and and even go platinum. Yeah. You know, um, so it's, it's I guess a, it's, it's become a broad, a really broad um, stream of many different ways through SoundCloud, YouTube. Yeah. Um, you know, some people are super popular, popular on YouTube and have no social media following on Instagram or Facebook, but they yep. have a million subscribers. Some people will do 70 million hits on YouTube, but have no traction on radio. Some people are spun all day on radio, but their socials are bullshit. Well, that's almost never true, but, <laughs> but, it, but, it's, but some of it does happen, you know? Um, so I guess there's just a lot of ways up the mountain. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, this, just because you're mentioning it right now, this is something that I've wanted to ask a couple people that we've had on, and I've honestly just never gotten to it. How, all right, let's just say, what, 15 years ago, maybe 12, they were gauging success by platinum and gold records. Now, that's album sales, right? Yeah. So now, being in the digital era with streams and everything like that, how do they gauge those things now? Like, how do they gauge how successful something is? Well, for a long time, streams didn't count yeah. towards, oh. towards that number, towards, like, the gold and platinum mm-hmm. um, record sale number. For a long time, they weren't counting. But then streaming numbers became so overwhelmingly large that it was essentially robbery not to count oh, these, yeah. these streaming numbers. And so then they created a system where to where now streams do count towards a, towards the sale of a record. And mm-hmm. and I don't know, I would hate if I fuck up the math in here, but I think I think this is what it is. <laughs> hey, I will we'll for, we'll forgive you. Yeah. Um, it's something like a um, hundred and 
150 streams, I believe, constitutes the sale of one record. And that's, that is like a 15-song project spun all the way through 10 times. Wow. So a 15-song album, listening to it front to back 10 times, that's one record sale. Wow. I think. Um, so it has to be the entire up. song. It can't Because if you're listening to New Music Friday, like I have to listen to the whole entire, like on Spotify, I have to listen to the whole song before I hit next for it to count. Uh, yeah, and you need to have your sound on as well. Oh, wow. Because this is, this is, there's called, you know, I'm sure you guys are maybe aware of streaming farms. Yeah. Um, so this is a thing where, oh, you know, pump my numbers, let's run these numbers up, put my shit on Spotify, leave it on repeat while you sleep yep. at night. Yeah. Well, okay. they're, they're, they're logged on to that now. They know that that's, that's the, the fuck shit. And so. <laughs> I gotta get, I gotta get a new method. Fuck. Yeah, <laughs> has a quiet room and soundproof and just plays the shit loud. <laughs> yeah, just leaving your Spotify open and on repeat with the sound down um, is not going to get it anymore. Wow. Um, but if you did leave your Spotify open on repeat with the sound up, um, from what I understand, it does work. But I w I'm also wondering if they're st starting to like lock, like key into that to where like uh, this guy's been listening to the same album for like six days. Um, he could yeah. be dead. Maybe this is not a real guy, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the same shit as like when somebody, if somebody puts an album out and then they buy like 10,000 copies themselves, you know? Yeah. They just so, put the numbers. Did, did, I was wondering, well, and I, and I haven't to, you know, I haven't like watched your show. In fact, I just learned that from it when I saw your social media post uh, the other right. day. And thank you, by the way, that was really no problem, man. nice what you said. <laughs> about <laughs> <me>. Um, <laughs> But yeah, uh, you probably heard what Takashi said about how Bieber and Ariana Grande robbed yeah, him of yeah. number one. I was wondering if that's true. Is like, that can real? you do yeah. that? Uh, from what I was told in my own investigations, there were from five different credit cards, a wow. several thousand records came in just under the wire before midnight. And while that is fair play, I guess, you've got to kind of scratch your head at, like, yeah. why oh, would there only be five sources for these thousands and thousands and thousands of record sales? It does feel like somebody's trying to fluff their numbers. Yeah. You know? That's so huh. infuriating. Oh, That's I can't crazy. stand that. I get so mad at that stuff. God damn it. And so, oh. yeah, hater love Takashi. I uh, I appreciate him saying that. Closing the game yeah, like that, right. I one hundred percent applaud that shit because yeah. we uh, transparency is key in this game. Ooh, yeah, he's like a rap cell conspiracy theorist or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> letting it all go. But it's the same shit. Like you see these people, and maybe you want to touch on this. You might know better than us. You see these people on like Instagram and Twitter, and they have thirty-five thousand followers and eleven likes on a post. Like, are they buying their followers too? Does that yes. happen as well? Like that legit 100%. happens. So like you can that, buy it's, followers. You it's can so definitely buy followers. fraudulent. It's like it's so like I, I don't know. Whatever. It's it's well, very. It doesn't work. Is the other thing because you obviously like you just saw through it. Well, how yeah. can you have 30,000 followers on the gram and your post is getting 12 likes? Well, it's because you don't have 30,000 followers. Yeah. So that, yeah. so um, anybody with a discerning eye that takes it, like looks twice at that is going to know that it's bullshit anyway. Um, huh. So yeah. th th at that point, it just becomes a facade, a false image. No. Um, and, uh, and in that, in my opinion, that will set you back. Yeah. It'll actually, um, make it more difficult for you to get an organic following um, that is truly connecting with you and trusts you because you're doing fake shit and it's yeah. like readily apparent, you know? Yeah. So, what, what was your path? Like, how did you get to where you're at? What, what, you know, stage or, or app or YouTube, Spotify, like, how did you get to where you, you are now? Um, I, um, yeah, how'd you I meet just, up with Godamus and Seth's crew? How did that whole thing begin, man? Okay, sure. It's a long-ass story, but I'll try to make Go it quick. Go for it. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I moved from Denver. I told you I grew up in Denver. Mm -hmm. I moved from Denver to KC and uh, was living with my buddy. Um, he's going to college. I was 
going nowhere at the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, I'll just hang out here, bro. I'll just yeah, pretty in. much. I had a job and shit, but like, you know. I, Rap I was, or uh, bust. Yeah. I should have been in college at the time, but I wasn't. Um, and uh, I, uh, we, uh, we, you know, we, we did hip hop. We loved hip hop. Um, and there became like a faction of us, a whole bunch, like maybe a dozen of us in variety of roles a whole bunch of like a bigger group that we called the SA crew at the time which stood for the simile assembly SA or whatever okay. um and that was that broke into subgroups um that were SES crew and all, there was a whole bunch of artists anyway right and uh I was a soloist I was ubiquitous way back in the 90s um and SES crew predated me like okay. uh, it was already a click without me, right? Wow. And now uh, when I and 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 several members in Sess Crew too, some they they came and went, some motherfuckers got kicked out, um, all this type of shit. But when I got into the group, there were four people in the group at the time, and uh, four rappers, um, and we had kind of had like a DJ that was in the group, but like he was going to college, he wasn't really. Um, super involved, but it was like uh, General Ali, Godimus, uh, Sorceress, um, Persef One, and then the DJ was Soul Supreme. And then even then, there was like satellite members like Mad Dog and um, uh, this dude Jack Frost was in it for a minute. I don't know. It was a lot of fucking guys, right? But when I got in, there was four solid members, and I was the fifth, and then that was it. And we were like, this is the last guy. So I was the last member to ever join Sess Crew. So after and, you joined, after you joined, the game's locked. No one else is allowed in. Yeah, the game was locked at that point. <laughs> um, and uh, and truly, the uh, the last, the final version of Sess Crew before members just started leaving was considered to be the five. Um, Ali, me, Godimus, Sorceress, Persef. Um, and then uh, from there, it fractured even further, and eventually it just whittled down to myself and Godimus. Now, was there any animosity? Were you like the Yoko Ono? Did they look at you as or no? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the Yoko Ono sets crew. No, I wasn't. <laughs> um, actually, I, through the years, even though um, the girls, Sor Sorceress and Persef One are females, um, the girls moved to Houston. Uh, Godimus and I stayed in Kansas City. General Ali went to jail for many years, um, and that was kind of the situation. Stayed in contact with the general while he was doing his bid bids um, in and out of jail for, for well over a decade. Um, stayed in contact with the girls when they were in Houston. Um, even after they went to Houston, Sorceress ended up coming back. And then mm -hmm. so Sorceress had a presence on what was our first album, Capture Enemy Soldiers. He's probably on about half the songs. Um, but it was more weighted towards Godimus and I, because we had created a, a fair amount of the record without her. She kind of came in about halfway through. Um, but uh, continue to do music with these people. You know, Sorceress is on my uh, first solo album, Matter Don't Money. So is uh, General Ali. Um, I think we, but, but he changed his name to Cuddy Slits. So if you ever see anything with Cuddy Slits, that's him. That's an awesome um, name. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. an awesome Super name. <laughs> um, you know, even as most the most recent stuff that we have with them, there's the Famished remix, and Persef is on there as well as Cuddy Slits is on there. Oh, yeah, I love that, that track. That came out in uh, 2017. Hmm. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's, you know. It's kind of an ongoing saga. They're always going to be considered alumni as far as those five go. Um, but uh, but Sess Crew definitely had solidified into a duo um, probably. And, I th you know, Sorceress left the group officially in, like, 2005, I want to say. Okay. When and you then, and when you and Godimus got together, like, yeah. the way you guys bounce off each other, yeah. it's unreal. Um, it's It's like – like a red and meth or how whoever else you want to compare like personally in my opinion better but like how did did you realize that was like a match made right from the get-go or did that just take like some time to go off each other um we had immediate chemistry yeah actually 
Uh, part of the reason that I think we hit it off is because I was like a freestyling motherfucker in the, in, in the, in the cypher, you know, motor mouth in the cypher coming up with spontaneous shit at length. I was really dope in the cypher. He was really dope in the cypher. And it was kind of like, damn, who's this guy? Yeah. You know? And I think we sort of had that mutual, like, who the fuck is this kind of a <laughs> um, vibe from jump, you know? Because uh, the cypher would go around and around and around. And, and we, there was a lot of us then. And so we keep the ball in the air for a long time. But sometimes these long-winded cypher might boil down to just me and him. Um, and uh, and you get to realize that, like, dang, there is, there's something here. Like, we could trade rhymes. We could freestyle for 45 minutes or an hour with just me and him going back and forth, not missing a beat, you know? Mm. Um, and uh, that really has a lot to do with how we built um, our chemistry, I right. think. No, it works, First. man. It's, it's really amazing, like, how you guys go back. Excess, uh, you, you want to ask anything? I know you've been kind of itching to ask some questions, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, sure. Um, well, yeah, go on. My question is kind of go in a gonna go in a different direction. Um, so, I've been rapping for a couple of years now, and uh, I have before that a lifelong experience of playing the drums. Um, Hi. And not just uh, behind a kit, but also in a drumline setting, like on the field. And, oh, and and marching? Yes, yeah. Tight. So ever since I've kind of like dove into the rap thing, I've been noticing more and more parallels between the drumming world and the rapping world. Um, they just kind of keep popping up. And pretty much I was just wondering if you've ever noticed any parallels from anything else that you've done in life and rapping. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, you know, big reveal. I don't know if you could see it back there. You see the kit? <laughs> oh, shit. Yes, I you do. You see the red lights? <laughs> hey, Ow. yes, I do. There's a drum yeah. kit back there. There you um, go. It, the, it all coincides, man. I got a guitar in here. Um, I got a keyboard sitting over there, too. That's probably hard to see. Um, all music, it, it's like it all feeds each, each other, I, I think. Um, and if you're finding that uh, your drumming is feeding your creativity, I wouldn't be shocked at all. I happen to learn cadences of... Right, right. You know, that's gonna... That will cross over into um, you creating cadences to rhyme to. You A know? thousand percent, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and truthfully, I've, I've just started to pick up the drums maybe in the past uh, year or so. Right. Um, but uh, we're like but, we're like in opposite shoes there, and that's <laughs> kind of, yeah, kind of. Um, but yeah, but I've always, as long as I've been freestyling, I've been beatboxing. So right. beat, beatboxing, I could beatbox a little bit. Um, and so you know, beatboxing, you're essentially writing drums in your brain, and then right. it's coming out your mouth. Right. Um, and so uh, it was kind of a natural transition for me to be able to like pick up some sticks and. I don't know. You could probably hear it in your head, right? As a drummer, Absolutely. you, you could, like hear drum lines or whatever. Of and so, yeah, yeah. So then it's just a matter of me trying to just translate what I'm hearing in my head onto the instrument and manipulating my limbs, which is so fucking hard to move <laughs> yeah. all your limbs yeah. in separation. <laughs> yeah. No, that's pretty cool, man. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, so you mentioned like you have the guitar, you have the drum. I actually had this written down. Any non-rap influences? We always ask this. Like, I remember mean, John Connor was a big Hall and Oates fan. You, you had some people who were into the Beatles. So like, was there anyone you grew up listening to that wasn't rap that really influenced you into music? Oh, 100%. Rap wasn't even my first influence for real. Um, you know, um, I'm a little older, so I've got, <laughs> I've got a lot of different uh, arcs of music that I've followed. But um i've really dabbled in damn near everything dude with the exception of like digging deep into maybe opera mm. like seriously every genre you every don't genre know what you're missing <laughs> um even like and I, and I would say maybe like countries probably lower on my list but i've even listened to like an extensive amount of country music yeah um i uh, metal uh, uh hair hair metal then into like hard metal 
one of my favorite bands to this day who was the last band I saw live is Metallica. I love Metallica. Mm. Um, uh, into alternative music. Nirvana was one of my biggest uh, influences back in the day. Um, ska, punk, no effects, the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones, um, you know, uh, even fucking bands you probably never heard of, Orange Nine Millimeters, Sam I Am, um, shit like this. Right. Um, and then moving into like, I used to rave, so I was really heavily influenced by house music, uh, Paul Oakenfold, one of my favorite trance DJs. Um, you know, uh, it's, I don't know, it, it really just goes on and on. I, I still like other shit to this day. Yeah. I like Billie Eilish. I like, um, uh, damn, I mean, I don't know. I, it's, it's so, it's, it's really <laughs> like everything. Why, There's not a lot of music I, love, I don't yeah. like, you know? This is why I love doing these, because like, on the surface, it's just like, oh, it's a rapper. He probably, yeah. But like, it's such a deeper thing, and I love getting like the other influences you guys have. Because like all of us here, you know, we listen to whether it's the Beatles or who not, like or, or Motown, Jackson Five. So just to get like sure. a perception of other people who actually rap, it's not just like oh they must only listen to hip hop. Like there's so much of a deeper fucking musical knowledge within you guys. So I love I love getting that part of it out, man. Yeah. Now I, I could I could it, name it, artists all day. I could just keep going. going and now. off that, <laughs> off, off that, what's the most embarrassing song on your in your iPod right now? Or iPod. Oh damn! I don't, know. I don't have an iPad or an iPod. Um, or like a phone. Dang. <laughs> dang. Um, guilty pleasure. A, a guilty pleasure. Like Shania Twain pleasure. or Celine Dion. I just named my two. Shit. Yeah. Oh damn! Damn. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love it. I don't know. I don't. I generally don't feel too guilty about shit. But I don't know. Maybe somebody might frown on like if I uh, if I like listen to like Chinatown by the Migos. Maybe somebody thinks I'm whack for that. I don't really care. Right. But like yeah. I love that shit. That shit's amazing to me. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I don't know if you, if you guys have ever heard Chinatown. <laughs> no. Um, it was kind of before. It's kind of one of their earlier works um, yeah. before they became the Migos that we know today. But. Um, I, I, I don't know, man. I, I Like I said, I think I was telling you earlier that I feel like there's generally a place for almost anything. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, I write more of like a thinking man's hip hop. Mm -hmm. But when, you know, the show's over and we're on the tour bus and we're trying to turn up, we're probably going to put on like Future or mm -hmm. Travis yeah. Scott yeah. or something like that. There's a time I'm not going to feel bad about that shit music. because yeah. I'm not trying to think. I want to vibe. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, this is I'm an ability to, like, be intricate all the time, you know. Yeah, this is hard time with that. Yeah, this yeah. is an ability I haven't yet like. We we talked about that the other day. <laughs> I can't, like, I know this guy who's talking about this music is for frats. I'm like frats when every <laughs> colleges don't want to be like you know. My neighbors think I'm selling dope. My, they they don't care about that shit. Like they want to hear like future like oh it's fucking hundred bitches selling coke banging bitches like that's what yeah, they yeah, want. yeah 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 yeah. You know? I mean, honestly, when you're in the club, you're not trying to, like, disassemble the metaphor, bro. You're just yeah. trying to, like, drink and drink. Like, I was going to try to take you home, but this kind of made me rethink of the whole night. Well, <laughs> I have mentioned this before, UB, and we have had a friend get kicked out of a club for trying to get Joe Budden played. So we do stick to our guns. <laughs> wow. Jersey represent. Jersey yeah, represent. Jersey represent. Sure. Budden's dope. Are you guys all in Jersey? Is that where you're at? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. Yes, yeah. All New Jersey. So Jersey let's get. First, everybody's a real thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so let's get to how you got to Strange Music and Tech Nine. Because I read you hand delivered a CD. I could be wrong. Like, and that's such a weird thing to look back on because, like, nobody has CDs. So, like, how did that whole thing happen? Um, it was really like um, a couple of key events, separate events that came together that I guess it sort of knocked down the barricade in Tech's mind to where our music leaked in. Um, and that was a couple of things. The first thing is, is that, you know, Tech had been running this running in uh, rap circles in the city while we were doing the same thing. Now, the city is just too much to explain or whatever, but it's a little bit divided. There's kind of like these guys over here and these other guys over there. And, we, and Kansas City is actually split between two states, Kansas and Missouri. So Kansas City, Kansas, Kansas City, Missouri. So there's that line. And then there's even other sub 
districts and shit like this. So everybody was around rapping around each other, but not with each other. However, Godimus and Tech ended up on the same album, this compilation album, way back in like 1999 called 50 wow. MCs oh, by shit. DJ Fresh. Wow. Um, and they weren't on the same song or anything, but they sure were on that same album. And some of the other members of Seth Crew was on this record too. Uh, General Ali, Persef One, whatever. It was on this same record. Um, but uh, so that was like the first splinter, right? Because Godimus and Tech had met each other back in the day and had that recognition and then years of whatever, right? Mm. And so that's the first thing. The next thing was that we got this record out called The Playground. And this was probably our first pure Cess Crew record, the Cess Crew that you know today right um because we had, we had a couple of records before that the capture enemy record and then the codename iron giant record but when once we did playground it was completely produced by leonard destroy one producer um no industry beats no shit like that and a heavy dose of me and godimus with a few guests right and so this record um we did a record release party in 2008, when the record dropped, we uh, had Helta Skelta, um, Sean, you know, Sean Price and Ruck. I don't know. You guys know Helta Skelta? Yeah. yeah. Probably, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yep. So Helta, Helta Skelta headlined this thing, and we uh, opened up for them, and that was our record release party. So the record comes out. You know, it's not reaching tech at this point, right? But um, we had sold our first pressing. We sold out of our first pressing. We continued to work with this same management company, management guy at the time. Um, and we were like doing, that was kind of our lane at the time. We were doing openings for marquee artists like Helta Skelta. Um, but one show in particular, Devin the Dude was the headliner and Mac Lethal and Cess Crew were opening the show. It was just three guys on the bill. And so... I think Devin and Tech were working on music at the time for I don't remember what record he was working on, KOD or some shit. I don't know. But uh, so Tech's in the audience, right? So we're opening the show. Tech's on the side of the stage, unbeknownst to us. We don't know. Um, and we're just doing our thing. Um, we were doing what we call for nothing at the time, which is like this um, acapella routine where we kind of ghost each other. And it's Hell almost yeah. like a... Uh, you know, it's like stuck in the car, stuck in the car. If I be here much, I be here much. My headless bob, my headless bob. Head, da, 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 da. We kind of do this thing, right? And um, we did that act and that piece of our act, and I guess it just blew tech away. And we were kind of finishing that up, people's clapping or whatever, and then tech grabbed my attention, and he was like, um, I, I like what I'm hearing or something like this. I think he said something like that, and he daps to me, and – I was like, oh, shit, it's Tech 9. And then got him. like, yo, what the fuck, man? And I was like, hold on, man. Tech's giving me props right now. He's like, oh, shit. He didn't know Tech was there either. Yeah. So Tech kind of gave us both props, whatever. The show went on. We ended up down in the green room later. And we kind of had some, like, face-to-face -face conversations where he and I had been in the same room. We'd all been in the same room a couple of times before. But he didn't really recognize us for the artists that we were up until this point. So even then, that wasn't it. That was just one little piece again. So he split, he kind of remembered, oh, Seth Crew, those guys, oh, white guy, black guy, whatever. Time goes by. So he's at a restaurant in town called Jack Stack. My friend is the bartender. This guy's still my friend to this day, this dude, Vince. Vince is bartending. He's got the playground CD on him. And Tech sits at the bar and he's like, oh shit. And so my homie Vince like slides his copy of Playground across wow. the bar to Tech, and he was like, "I think you should have this. These are my homeboys, Cess Crew." And then he was kind of like, "Cess Crew, that sounds familiar. Cess Crew, who is that? You know what I mean?" And yeah. and so like it's kind of in there, but he wasn't still wasn't really connecting. But then he right. takes the CD home and actually listens to it, and then he remembers. He was like, "Oh, these are those guys at the Dev and the Dude show." And then before I know it, um, I'm opening up 
Twitter and in my Twitter mentions, Tech has put up a tweet and he's like on a treadmill working out and my fucking music is playing in the background. <laughs> That's and so crazy. now my phone's exploding and people are like, yo, did you see what fucking Tech did? Tech, put your shit up. Tech, Tech's playing your music. I'm like, oh, shit. Right? And so this was kind of the beginning of it. Now, even then, that was 2008 where he saw us live. I yeah. want to say 2009 when he got the demo, finally, right? The ink didn't dry until late 2011, and then we got announced in wow. January of 2012. Wow. So it was kind of like that long of a process. I know that was a fucking long story, but yeah. it was really – No, it's great. Three or, yeah. It took three or four years for it to really gel, you know what I mean? Is that what the roadwork video was? I wanted to ask specifically about that video. So the roadwork video, it has you kind of being led through Strange Music's headquarters, sitting down, and you're almost like in awe. Like, wow, this is happening. Was that kind of the concept behind that video? Roadwork. Yeah, I think, you know, roadwork, I was trying to knock out some assets for Matter Don't Money, and the ink wasn't dry yet, but Tech and I have been talking and fucking around we in tech had been fucking around. He had put us on his, he did a mixtape called Bad Season with um, DJ Who Kid. And he put us on a song on that song, which is the first song we ever did with Tech Nine. It was us, Seth Crew, Chris Calico, Tech Nine, and, and Cut Calhoun on this song or whatever. And um, that was just another step in the proving ground, you know? Yeah. It was that song. And, right. and uh, that and that led to another song called Give It Up that was on a, the Sixes and Sevens record. And then that led to another mm -hmm. song called Unfair on the Strangeland record. And so, damn, I, I think I kind of got lost. Wait, <laughs> got lost in my own damn story. What was your question? <laughs> the, ro the road work. <laughs> road work. <laughs> road work. So, yeah, this was all leading up to that shit, though. We're living it. Um, we, uh, we didn't know if we were going to get signed or not. We had done all these songs and all this shit, yeah, but that didn't wow. mean that we were signed. We were just kind of, like, You're fucking like around. Yeah. Um, so... Our next move after Playground was to drop uh, Matter Don't Money and Godimus was working on his record, that, The Devil, at the time. And um, we were going to put those records out if they didn't sign us. Uh, because there was a lot of talk of that, but, you know, it was like, yeah. shit, how can, how, we didn't know how to make it like go all the way through. Um, but then eventually it did go all the way through. And so then we kind of like couldn't drop those records for real. We put them out for free as mixtapes instead because mm -hmm. all of our efforts got diverted into putting out records on strange music rather than independently. Oh. Um, so road work, <laughs> to get back to the point. <laughs> this was, is a lot of work to get here. Let's yeah, get <laughs> um, road, road work was like, well, we were, I was almost like hedging my bet. Okay. There was no guarantees. Um, text in the video and stuff yep. like that. Yeah. But we didn't have no agreements for real at the time. Um, and so it was just like some homie shit at the time. There's a, there's a really interesting Sess Crew video called Changes that is off the Playground record. Now, this record came out in 2009 or whatever. And uh, it, uh, it was almost like a premonition, like a like a sort of writing something and then it manifesting into reality. And so by the time we shot the video for changes, we were just hammering on the door at strange music playground had been out a couple years and we're like, fuck it, let's keep making videos because we knew that we were hitting a sweet spot. I was dropping shit independently, putting it out on YouTube. It was getting traction. Um, and uh, we were able to orchestrate um sort of us the story of us coming into the strange music fold even though this writing was like 2009 writing the video i want to say came out in 2011 and it sounds like we wrote it the day before or something like this oh, cool yeah um and it just kind of worked out that way uh i so saw I, I don't know it's, it was an odd time <laughs> we were like um sort of building our future unknowingly like stumbling through it 
uh, and it was you know just what, un unfolding. That's awesome how that worked out, how your CD actually made it to someone. I handed my CD to Paul Kane in 2008. I'm pretty sure he used it as a coaster in his fucking trailer. So <laughs> God bless you, man. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. There's a lot of demos, a lot of demos. Yeah, going around. yeah, yeah, I got you. Was it intimidating the first time being in the studio with Tech? Um, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I came, you know, you come ready. But yeah. I said, well, I, I guess put it like this. It's intimidating to be on a song with Tech. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. Oh, to yeah, be in person yeah. with him. <clears throat> Tech's very friendly. He's very personable. Mm -hmm. um, he's like laughing and smiling all the time. He's got a lot. He's got mad jokes, you know. So he's very charismatic. To be around him is like not uncomfortable. To know that you're about to get on a song with him is mad uncomfortable. Yeah. It's fucking terribly uncomfortable. <laughs> um, so um, and you know, it's I've gotten over it to a degree to this day but i always still if i'm going to get on a song with tech i'm like i gotta bring my a plus 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 game because you could fuck around and lose your life on this record you know what i mean yeah, yeah. um and it's still like that tech will body anybody at any given time maybe you know he might yeah. really rap so hard that he sets your ass on fire and that's your last fucking song you ever do you know <laughs> so um so i rap like that when i'm <laughs> and that's uncomfortable <laughs> as fuck i rap like that yeah. when i'm on a, a song with tech <laughs> yeah. when you um when you when you got signed you got signed to Sess crew right like it was yeah. like a double deal so when you decided to branch off a little and do a ubiquitous album did they have a problem with that or no or is there like an understanding well well, I can't give you all the details of the contract. Okay. Yeah. When we signed, we actually signed as a group and as soloists. Oh, okay. So cool. the solo records that you're witnessing now were actually agreed to way back in 2011. Wow. Hmm. Wow. If you can believe it. No, that's I, – I don't know the stuff that goes into the contract. I could imagine there's a lot of – a lot of things that go into it, though. So this is your the last album was like an eight years in making type thing, like not not necessarily eight years in the making, but agreed to eight years, eight years ago. ago. Yeah. Right. Um, made it all very recently. Yeah. But I, I guess that I guess put it like this: we always we've always been soloists. You know, like I, I was ubiquitous before I met Godimus. Godimus right. was Godimus before he met right. me. Yeah. And Sescrew was something I got inducted into. So I've always been a soloist first actually yeah. um but i really got eyeballs on me being a duo um but same same for him before before we even got a sesku record out got has put out a, a solo record called ghost that maybe you know about or maybe you don't most people don't know about it but um i can remember helping him make ghost before we even made a sess record and I was just like a guest on there a couple of times. Right. Um, so we've always thought of ourselves as solo artists. And um, it's just finally coming to fruition sort of later in the game. And I guess maybe the Matter Don't Money and The Devil are really testament to that. Those, those are records that um, we put out. It, those came out in April of 2012. Yeah. Um, and uh, before any of our strange music projects did. That's cool, man. You're a real humble dude, man. I'm, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad it worked out for you, for real. Cause like you come across real humble, and, and I really enjoy it. So like it's not like one of these, you know, like uh, cocky douchebags you come across. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, man. <laughs> no problem, Eric. You got any questions? Not on the spot right now. Thanks, right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. I want to do one round table. I don't want to leave anyone out. You know. It's all right, though. I don't think we asked it, but how did you get the name Ubiquitous? Uh, That's what I was um, Yeah. I, uh, It'd be great now if you told the story about the road work video and just, like, went all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's my fault. I think, you know, uh, I had an Americano, so shit gets, shit gets real, you know? Um, caffeine is a motherfucker. Yep. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but ubiquitous, I, you know, that's something I cooked up in, in college. I did go to college before I stopped going to college. When I was at university, 
it was a it was a concept I picked up in biology. You know, I was taking a biology course and they were ex- explaining the concept of ubiquity, um, which is just to be in all places or whatever, to be ever present. Yeah. And I just thought that that was like um, an amazing concept. And it's kind of, it's almost like the goal of hip hop, like the underlying goal of hip hop is, you know, on some KRS one shit, I'm out for fame. That's what graffiti writers was time, trying to do. They were trying to go all city, have their name in yeah. all five boroughs you know, on every train line, yeah, et cetera, the subways et cetera. Going trying to get around. up everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Right. So you shit could be a scene through the entire city. Right. Yeah. And so that's like continually been a goal of hip hop in general is to become ever present and to be everywhere. And I was like, Oh shit, this name this is mind blowing. So I was like, that's me. And, and honestly, guys, it was like, you know, maybe not the best name to pick at first, at least. Because it was like this big idea, and I was just a little guy, and I yeah. was not everywhere. Oh, I was unknown and all this type of shit. So, but it's a name that I've grown into. Yeah, no, it's a cool name. Uh, yeah. It's got a, yeah, it's got a great like the UB or UBI. It's just great like to shorten it too. Um, excess anything? Um, just another like observation that I made, um, like yeah. in my experiences. So ever since I started writing and putting out my own music, I've noticed that the amount of it, and it's not that it's completely stopped, but the amount of music that I go out and search for to listen to, even by my favorite artists, has significantly dropped off. And I'm wondering if you have experienced anything similar and if you have like any thoughts on to why that might be. For me, um, I mean, I do try to keep my ear in the cypher and my fingers on the pulse or whatever. But the more music that I make, it's like I've, I delve deeper into my own world all the time. Right. And I don't know if this is kind of what you're experiencing as well, but I wouldn't want to be too deep into any other artist <clears throat> almost at all anymore because it really just kind of takes me off of my brand. Right. Um, and that's not, uh, not to say that I still don't draw influences from new music because I right, of course, definitely right. do. But um, for me, it's a lot easier to take in an artist that I've already been taking in. Like just, let's just say Jay-Z for instance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jay's been making music for a really long time. And so I've become I've, I've adapted to hearing his music. I can really hear Jay. So since I've been hearing Jay forever, it's not really nothing to me to like take in a new project that he makes because mm. he's already right. sort of like a foundation in my building blocks, you know? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, but if like um, somebody like JID or YBN Corday comes out, um, these guys are fucking dope, but they're, they're so new to me that, it's a little harder for me to take them in because um, it's uh, it's like sticking a new hand into my cooking recipe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, um, but I still, I, I fight, I, I, I wrestle with that. I don't know how it is for you, but um, because I, I don't want to turn a blind eye to the new dope shit. You really actually can't even afford to turn right. a blind eye to the new dope shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it's a lot harder for me to take it in in a safe way, if that makes sense, without it tainting my own art. Exactly. Right. No, that's that's pretty much that's pretty much the same thing that I am experiencing, and pretty much was why I was asking. So appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. I, I have a question. If yeah, if you could do a song with one one rapper and one singer, who would they be? The the person that you're like, this is a big get, like, and you to you. Would they um, do? on the same song or two songs? Uh, different songs, different songs. <laughs> different yeah, songs. Celine Dion and Jay Z might be a little weird, but it might be a little weird. That'd be phenomenal. Yeah. Um, heart will go on. <laughs> you know, uh, damn, that's hard. That's a hard question. Yeah, um, Eric. Jeez. 
I uh, pressure, man. I don't know what you want. <laughs> you know, I get asked questions like this a lot. Like, yeah. who's your top five, dead or alive? Do my yeah. answers always change? I don't fucking know. Yeah, but like, not not top day five, day, but somebody day. to you that you're but, like, this this would be awesome, man. If we did a song, yeah. I've I've answered this question in the past, and I'm gonna just kind of go with how I answered it in the past because I don't want to sit here and think on yeah. camera for real. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, I I always say Nas. I always say it would Nas. be like a dream to work with Nas as a rapper. Um, okay. and, uh, and I don't know, maybe Nas isn't the most, uh, he, maybe he's like not the number one rapper ever in the world or whatever, yeah. but I'm, uh, I think that I'm so dazzled by his versatility and a lot of the things that he does, his effortless, he's very conversational with his flow and his storytelling. It just is like, seems like breathing, um, yep. to me and kind of the way he does his shit. Um, and so that would, that would be kind of crazy to work mm. with Nas. Nas. Uh, Nas yeah. I could me. see that. I could see that. Um, and that's, you know, he's not, he's not the most current guy or whatever, but yeah. that don't, yeah. don't even matter to me. It, it would yeah, be like, personal, a give me to be personal. like Drake, 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 yeah, for the yeah. standard, Drake for the rapper. But, <laughs> um, but, um, but yeah, I don't know. It's kind of been a lifelong thing to, for me to, for, to work with him. So, uh, I, if I saw, I think honestly, to to watch or to be able to listen to you and Eminem go back and forth would be ridiculous. Man, that would be fucking crazy. You yeah. Know, the, I don't know. Um, on my socials today, this is not. I don't know. It's kind of neither here nor there. But some there's a guy that like just doing these custom hats, right? And um, he hand painted this hat, and it has. I saw you can that, see yeah. it on my Instagram yeah. story right now, mm -hmm. and it's got. Tech Nine, Eminem, and me on the hat, and that's it. Wow. Tech Nine, Eminem, and me. <laughs> Did and you order one? <laughs> no, it's one of one, and he sold it. <laughs> oh, damn. Already to somebody else. But um. Speed him part two. I, yeah, <laughs> let's <Maybe>. go. <laughs> um, but yeah, sometimes shit like that happens, and I'd be like, "Damn, how do I get grouped in with these fucking guys?" Mm. Um, not to shit on myself or whatever, but it's yeah. like it's kind of wild to yeah, even. Yeah. Why me, dude? Why me and these That's two guys? Um, but I'll take it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would love to go back and forth with Eminem. Um, sometimes I wonder if he's ever even heard me rap or not. He had, um, he had to have. But and that's kind of no. what I think. Whether whether or not he would ever admit it, and you know he can't. He's got to be careful because he's he's literally on the peak of yeah. the mountain. If he mm. even says my name, it's gonna be a fucking thing, you know. Yeah. So um, but yeah, I like to I like to at least tell myself that story that like M Herbie rap before and and, <laughs> and I hope he enjoyed it. I don't know, yeah. you know. Um, hey. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> that's so cool. Hey, Yubi, uh, I know you're busy and stuff, so like, we want to get to our gun to your head segment. We like to do this with a lot of our guests. Um, uh, we, keep, we keep a tally, so this is very important to us. We have, we have ongoing standings, okay? And right mm -hmm. now, we're all tied at two. So um, I won last week, so I'm going to go last. Uh, this is good. We do like, it's kind of a would you rather, but we do a little wordplay involved. So Eric's going to go first and just answer these honestly, all right? Sure. Okay. Okay, shit. <laughs> would you rather would you rather scratch the roof of your mouth eating Captain Crunch or get crunched by a captain? I'll take the Captain Crunch. Okay. <laughs> would you rather live in a rock or get hit by a rock? Live in a rock or get hit by a rock? Are you you mean Iraq the country? Yes, yes. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> uh, I'll get hit by a rock. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, would you rather perform in Greece lightning or get struck in lightning by Gre in Greece? I, I would love to perform in Greece lightning. <laughs> would you rather uh, would you rather arm wrestle the Incredible Hulk or Hulk Hogan? Uh, I'll go Hulk Hogan. I think the Incredible Hulk would rip my arm off. Okay. Good choice. You have a two on <laughs> you have choice. a two on two cage match, and you can only have one partner. Would you rather have Fat Joe or Slim Shady? <laughs> <laughs> Give me Slim. Give me Slim Shady. Slim Shady. <laughs> I got you. Brian, you're up. It was the... It was the I know. I'm, uh, 
<laughs> That's hilarious. All right. Would you rather eat a piece of tree bark or bark at every tree you see? <laughs> Give me the tree bark. I can eat that. Okay. Would you rather spend a night in a porta potty or have one knocked over while you're inside? <laughs> Fuck. It's rough, right? <laughs> Just let it be knocked over. Let's get it over. Damn. Fuck. It's horrible. <laughs> Would you rather <laughs> listen to nothing but Clay Aiken music or eat a handful of Play-Doh? I eat the play. I think I've eaten a handful of Play-Doh. Give me the Play-Doh. <laughs> no, we all have at some yeah, point. At some <laughs> point, yeah, at some point, it's salty. It's fine. <laughs> Would you rather have people mistakenly call you UTI for the rest of your life or have a UTI <laughs> for the rest of your life? Oh my god, that's <laughs> that's tough. Um, Shit. <laughs> I'll take the name fuck up. People fuck up my name already. It's on here. UTI. Shit. <laughs> All right, but last one. Would you rather get traced, chased by a street sweeper or have to sweep the streets of New Orleans after Mardi Gras? Ooh, I'll get chased by the street sweeper. I've been in New Orleans. It's all bad. <laughs> yep. All right. All right. I'm a current champion looking for a repeat here. Ooh. Would you rather perform the electric slide every day or just one time slide into an electric fence? I can do let's do the electric slide. Boogie yeah. woogie woogie. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to nine inch nails for the rest of your life or have nine inch nails for the rest of your life. I'll listen to Nine Inch Nails. I didn't name them earlier, but I fuck with Trent Reznor. Let's go. Damn it. <laughs> so, would you rather be in a saw situation or a Freddy Krueger nightmare? Freddy, dude. I'll take Freddy. Would you rather you look? Could be, you could be Freddy. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, right, right. <laughs> would you rather look like Splinter for a week or have a Splinter for a week? I'll take the Splinter for a week. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> would you rather? Favorite. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> would you rather do 100 jumping jacks or watch 100 people named Jack jumping around? I'll watch the Jacks jump, even <laughs> I, though I, I could go either way. But that sounds amusing. <laughs> uh, all right so who won was it me eric oh, who asked the first one or brian who asked the second ones oh god <laughs> <laughs> i don't even remember what you guys asked me for real um no, i'm gonna give it fat, to, i'm gonna give it to to brian i guess i'm gonna give it to brian god damn it all right i don't fine. i'm sorry to dethrone you i could have no, just gave it to you to keep your street going but it's fine we respect it uh plug yourself you be what can we catch uh anything new coming out um it's uh you know i'm working on a second record right now but um there's not too much happening watch for a feature on the Godamus record once it's complete there'd be some right. new Sesquare crew music on there but other than that you just scrape through the strange music catalog i'm always making yep. stuff with, with those guys with all my uh with all my label mates right and um I don't know. Follow me on my socials. I guess. Yeah, we'll definitely post it and everything. I got to ask you one more thing, if you yeah. have a couple minutes of your time. Uh, XSIQ here, he's been rapping. He would love to just spit a couple bars for you, like for a minute, if you don't mind. Yeah, I'm here. Go for it, Bri. Word up. A lot of people say he resembles you, so we'll leave the room okay. for a sec and let him do his Great. thing. Go for it, Bri. Great. Great. No pressure. I have to pay. <laughs> All right, it's off a new track I have coming out. I'll just spit it a cappella. Off in a moth on my mind, I'm contemplating all to the time, but if not, I'm gonna profit or shine to be honest, does not it. What I want is to unlock, but it can find so the block it's been softened inside these constipated thoughts are gonna rise out of armor to mull up, gonna speed it up like sonic and ball up. All the energy I got is atomic. As I make another cosmic deposit, comes sort of like a comet with rockets, when you know to put a common or stop it. With the gobbles and anomalies, these obviously fabricating sonics is not it. Tell the animation while this thing vomit. When I'm on the beat, irresistible. Get them on their feet, yes, this is the pull. Ever wanna eat or wanna take up a seat, even you gotta be your feet, this is the full. Keep it the three kings, witness the full team, wipe a defeat, we deep leave your whole team, effort to see, we never let up the heat, it's better never to peak, head glitch, bit the bullet, charging a bull, arm with the full, arsenal, arm with the full. Marketable, cartman apart, mixed alarm with the when I'm harboring your marmots torn apart because you really are lethargic. This fucking lace the auto marvin the marsh in the summer space in part in bitch but the make it snarky y'all are straight up like a mystic tarted but if they get started i'm a tank with sharks and a dental cave for the bargain why can't the rage can be hard to anticipate like a spartan whenever they with the target played with the part lead crazy and the public get a pank in the carcass dang and discard it in the way that a spark of a craving that'll start to be safer that'll start to be safer and as i take them apart uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah bad what do you think wow i'm nervous yo i'm nervous as shit right now by the way it's, it's okay <laughs> If you got sweaty hands, don't even trip. I've been there. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
Dang, like Tech Nine's yeah. in the room, you know. You know, uh, his yeah. your boy uh, Godamus actually followed him on uh, Twitter recently, like a year ago or some shit. Or recognized it, so uh, oh. yeah, no, he's like uh, a lot of people compare him to you. So I wanted him on to see, like, if you saw the anything you could, uh, you know, give him advice on, or if you really thought it was dope or whatnot. Be honest. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a uh, there's a lot going on there, man. <laughs> um, you got you got the uh, I could see how the drumming is is um heavily influenced <laughs> coming to influence you yeah i can hear yeah. you i can hear your drum cadences your cadence is crazy you know like uh you've got a really crispy cadence i'll say that that um and that's interesting i guess then that, that patterns you know you've got really mm -hmm. interesting patterns your patterns are dope bro um yeah i heard a, and i heard a couple of couple of little punch lines in there Wallace and Gromit joint, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a few things. Um, yeah, it's a, uh, it's, it's dope, man. I wish that I could hear you better, and I mean, that's probably just has a lot to do with the Zoom right. call. Yeah, the Zoom connection. Um, yeah, um, but um, I mean, it's not that I couldn't hear you, but if I was in person with you, I feel like I would have been able to uh, <laughs> yeah. follow the words a little bit better. Um, yeah. But um, but yeah, you're just taking in the flow, and um, it was man, you're, you're fast, bro. You're fast. I appreciate it. It's got to be the drumming, man. It's got to be the drumming. Oh. All right, my um, turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, I got nothing. <laughs> man, yeah, but also, I, I just wanted to say real quick. Um, it was crazy before how you mentioned uh like Wu-Tang and all the different artists and their different collaborations and like how just how much of a powerhouse of a group that they were being as big of an influence on you as it was like that strange music and the whole roster and you guys has literally been that for me like like how you said Wu-Tang is kind of what put you over the edge into really wanting to do this thing like you guys are what really put me over the edge into wanting to try my hand at this thing I really wow. appreciate what you guys are doing Truly. Well, thank you, man, from me and from all of us. And, um, and, and I, can, I can hear that. I can hear that in your style. Um, uh, you know, there's a, I mean, it's almost like a damn prerequisite to if you want to be on strange music, you got to be able to go. Right. Kind of like you were going just now, you know. <laughs> um, so uh, that's dope, man. Um, yeah, I, I, hear, I hear the influence. You, somebody, somebody said that you get compared to me a lot. Honestly, yeah. if I can make comparison i think you're a little closer to tech than you are to me um, wow, what a uh, that is such a compliment man <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah um yeah yeah but um that's a that's a that's a hell of a style you got going i will i will say this if um if i can give you um a critique that Please. i've heard tech give lots of people it's a conversation that he and i have had many times before and it's um, uh, uh, clarity is is the key to everything as far as connecting with your fans and with your audience. 100%. So um, it, I think that it's a common, and I'm not saying that this about what you just did, but since become rapping really fast has really become um, it, uh, in style yeah. and almost uh, necessary. If you ask me these days, it's like if you if you don't rap fast, you, people might look at you like you're not that dope or whatever. Mm. Um, but within that, uh, don't uh, I would never sacrifice your clarity for your speed. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you're right. going so fast that your clarity is being compromised, then you should probably slow down. I is my you. is my recommendation. And for that sure. doesn't mean you shouldn't rap fast. It just means that if people um it, it are not connecting with your words then it becomes kind of like a uh like a flash like a parlor trick mm. got you that, that a great way to put it yeah more, more than anything we want to be understood yeah you know what i'm saying right you don't want to be all style and no substance yeah. exactly and it's and it and there and even if you're rapping really fast there might be substance in there but right if um uh, but if that clarity is coming through, we might miss your substance. Or if your clarity is not coming through, we might miss your substance. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so, and, but that's a balancing act. You know, I got I do the same shit, bro. I got I got to rap fast too, and I'm like, 
how fast is too fast, but how slow right. is not fast enough. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, it, you know, yeah. uh, it's that a thing. Have to yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. man, thanks for coming on. We'll, we'll let you go, bro. Would you want to come on again when you have an album coming out? Sure, man. I would love to come back, man. Uh, yeah, I hope that your show continues uh, yeah, me too. on that long and you thrive and grow. Next time we do it, it'll be bigger and better, you know? And uh, yeah. if you ever fucking tour up here in the East Coast, man, uh, we'll definitely like, try to hit up a show and shit and let you know if we come by. So That would be dope. It would be cool to like, you know, catch a drink in person or something. I don't even know if I'll be drinking, but we can hang out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? At least. You can watch us drink. <laughs> yeah. Bro, thanks okay, for coming wait. on, man. Really appreciate thanks, it. Bro. Thanks, thanks, man. I appreciate y'all, man. Keep this show going. I, 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 I'm going to check in on y'all.